I was just walking past the lounge and I've looked out and I can just see so many leaves falling. Snowing leaves out there today. And as I start to film, it slows down. <laughs> Classic. But I promise you it was. So on the drive, we have a pallet worth of wood chip for the chicken pen because it's getting very muddy. And so my task this afternoon is to wheelbarrow all of this around and get it down on the ground. Well, I'm out in the garden. I'm not sure if you can see, but behind me, you'll see in the distance that the sun is setting. It is currently 17.05. It's taken me the whole day to do my computer admin bits and bobs after this morning's dog walk but I feel a lot better for doing it and I wanted to come out today because the chicken coops getting particularly muddy on the ground and as you've just seen there is a pile of wood chip on the drive that needs to be transported from there into the coop and so I'm gonna do that now I probably have about an hour I think we're gonna start losing like around six plus I want to be able to get the chickens back in and in their coop safely before it gets dark because I don't want to be looking for chickens in the dark around the garden. And so we're going to uh, get busy, very busy. The garden is covered in leaves at the moment because as you saw also, the leaves are falling thick and fast at the minute. I think the plan was to do the leaves today and try and cut the lawn. I may have to do some of that tomorrow with the leaf blower but it's actually been a really beautiful day. The sun's been out all day. So it would probably, out of all the days at the moment, have been a really good day to have got the lawnmower on the lawn as well. But I'm gonna quickly show you the state of the place because it's looking messy in comparison to how it normally looks. And then I'll show you the chicken coop and then I'll show you the after. And so I'm not filming me actually doing it because it's honestly gonna be a mad rush and to film it would take even longer and I may end up not getting it done. So let's quickly have a little whip around and I'll show you the condition of the garden right now. So the patios have been getting a bit of a leaf dust in. And as you can see, the lawn needs a bit of a trim and there's a lot of leaf fall on the lawn as well. So a good tidy up in the garden is due. But more importantly, if I come and show you the chicken coop. Morning ladies. Oh, I thought you were gonna let me stroke you then. Bluebell will. Come on, Bluebell. Good girl. Yes, you're such a good girl. Good little girl. You fluffing your feathers at me? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's just getting a little bit muddy on the ground. In comparison to some of the days, it's not looking too bad at the moment, but it does get incredibly wet around here. So we're gonna get that wood chip down and it will look a lot nicer in here, hopefully when I'm finished. So the tasks are to obviously remove all of the logs, the feeders, the water and so forth, and then probably give this a quick rate, get rid of everything and then start putting all the wood chip down. Oh, it's a little bit colder than I thought out here. I'm certainly gonna warm up in a second, but yeah, that's, that's the, uh, the current situation that's what we're looking like right now so we'll check back in in let's say an hour and see how far i've got <laughs> well the chicken pillows are in <laughs> so the next job is to slice these bags open and get this wood chip down well we're starting to lose the light the chickens are going to want to get back in there coop very soon and so I need to do this really quickly we're going to break those bags down I thought I'd time lapse it why not
chickens are in. Well, we have a full house today because Tatty and Bolly, who's having a poo, I won't film that for Ev's decency, have joined us. Well, I thought I'd come out this morning and show you what I was getting up to yesterday evening because it did get very dark and it was very difficult to see, so I thought I'd come out when it was brighter today and show you. So as you can see, the bark is down. It looks really good. I'm really happy with the quality, the size, and the color. Hello, ladies. Not for you, Tatty. No. Yes, good morning, my darlings. Yes. Yes. You like your new home? Mm, you like your new home? Yes. Nothing there, I'm sorry. Absolutely devastated, aren't you? I'll come back with some, don't worry. It's okay. Nothing on me. But I will come back with some, so relax. Who's been digging in the corner? Yeah, it looks tidy. I was having a little chat with the girls yesterday and uh, we all agreed that we needed to get a new feeder just to hang underneath the coop because we really like the water feeder over there in the stainless steel and so I think it'd be quite nice to get something similar to hang down. You all agree? Yeah, I think so. We had a little mother's reunion last night and uh, we all came to that conclusion, didn't we? Yes. <laughs> Look at the top. Snowdrop wants it. Yes, yes, I know. Very noisy this morning. You look so good in here. Yes, you do. Yes. You're going to hopefully look a bit cleaner now. Anyway, looking good. Makes me laugh when they drink the way they sort of like knock it back. <laughs> you have a sip and then you knock it back. <laughs> it is so funny. It's so funny how they also all like to just copy each other. So if one of them starts to do something, they all want to get involved doing it. But also this morning I've just opened up. And we're four eggs deep. So at the moment, the chickens are laying really well, apart from Gwyneth which is that one there in the middle of the screen. She's still quite young, so hopefully, fingers crossed, that she will start. You okay, Lamy? Welcome to the madhouse. Enjoying the show, ladies? There's a lot of animals at our house, isn't there? Well, I'm just busy packing, ready to head to Clifton House for a few nights with Lydia. It's going to be the first time that I've ever visited, and so it should be very lovely. I'm looking forward to it. But last night, I decided to do a President Clean, which is a video that I followed from Kirby Allison. He does some fantastic videos on how to do shoe care. And these particular shoes, I wish I'd filmed the state of these shoes before I started. These particular shoes had really bad watermarks on the toe and I think that at some point they'd either stained or I hadn't cleaned them properly before applying polish and I'd actually locked in the stains so there were loads of little water stains on both the toes and I have to be honest they didn't look particularly tidy even though I'd just done a fresh polish on them and it just highlighted it when you're in natural daylight so in my room up here when I was doing it at night I hadn't noticed and then when I started wearing them I was like what was, what's that and I tried to rub it off cut a long story short a president's polish or president's shoe care routine is quite lengthy it's quite long it's supposed to be done over a period of days um, I did it over a period of about six hours because there's a lot of time allowing things to dry and to nourish and so forth but essentially I used a product called Reno Matte and Reno Matte is think of it as like a safe stripper so it literally got rid of all of the polishes and creams that had been applied to these shoes and just took the shoes right back to their natural leather which ensured that I was going to get rid of those water stains that were locked in under the layers of shoe polish that I'd applied. I basically 
undertook that process and then gave a slight shine on the toe just to finish them off and I'm so pleased with how they're looking they just look so much better they just look smoother I'm not sure this camera is not the best camera I have to be honest for for quality of content if you take a look at the toes on those now they're just a lot smoother and you can't see any of those water stains that were there before there are dents and scuffs and stuff that of course I've had these shoes now for probably three years and so naturally they're gonna have creases and and scratches on them but they're in pretty good nick I'm happy they look really nice and a good learning curve I have noticed that the shoes go quite dark on the toe and then they go to a lighter brown as the shoe continues on I can help adjust that and that's just essentially by me applying a darker polish to that part of the shoe. I think because I focused a lot on the toe it's darkened that up over the years and the sort of side of the shoes have been neglected to an extent in comparison and so that leather hasn't darkened up as much. So it's just really around this section of the shoe you can just see slightly lighter which is it the end of the world because it kind of goes from really dark to a bit lighter to a bit lighter so it fades up but I think I might apply some black shoe polish just to this section of the shoe and the tongue just to help soften that just a little bit. The actual trouser leg covers the majority of that anyway so you only really see that on the boot so it's not the end of the world but my Crockett and Jones boots have had a nice clean also to head down today, I'm just going very casual, a little bit country. I'm actually trying the new Holland Cooper Gilet. Holland Cooper have now started doing menswear. So if you're looking for any sort of country style attire, they've got some really nice jackets and fleeces on there at the moment. So this is very similar to the Gilets and the fleeces they do in the female collection. So you've got the Holland Cooper on the neck and you've obviously got the leather bound zips with the embroidery on the chest two little side pockets just here and of course a nice soft fleece so fits really nicely currently in good condition we'll see how it fares over the coming years with the dog walks but yeah really comfortable i just want it to be nice and comfy as we're traveling down today i think we may have afternoon tea as our first stop when we arrive and then this evening we're going to be going to one of the restaurants at clifton and i think it's going to be a bit more of like a a smarter evening a nice dining experience so yes I will probably catch you on kind of back end of this week I'm not sure what's in the diary but I think I may be going to London so we'll see but anyway I'm going to check out for now and we'll pick back up when I've returned back from Clifton and if you do want to see what we get up to at Clifton House then make sure you head over to Lydia's channel um, because we'll be vlogging over on there The news at 12 with Lydia Millen. The news at 12 with Lydia Millen. Oh, filming me, filming me. Yeah, filming me and filming me. <laughs> yeah, that'd be lovely. Thank you so much. First things first, in this video, I've been saying Clifton, and I found out that it's Cliveden, and so feel free to give me a hard time <laughs> for mispronunciating the location at which we were visiting. However, I've now been corrected, and I fully understand that it's Cliveden House, not Clifton House. So I try and remember that. I also like to say Holland and Cooper, and Lydia always reminds me Holland Cooper Alley, wearing the Holland Cooper gilet now. <laughs> so do excuse my bad pronunciation. It will continue to happen, but I'll do my best to try to correct it where I can. Cliveden was absolutely fantastic. We had a wonderful time staying at Spring Cottage. We got to learn a lot about the history 
um, which was also very fascinating. There's obviously lots of scandals and very prominent historical moments that took place at the house. Also in Spring Cottage. If you want to go and learn a little bit more about um, Spring Cottage, then do make sure you go and check out Lydia's video. I believe it's already live. We got to enjoy the grounds. We had an afternoon tea. We had a couple of lovely dinners. Uh, we had some treatments and it was all very nice. So yeah, do head over there and watch her video. I know you just saw a glimpse of some of it in this video and that breakfast room was absolutely insane. From my understanding, I don't know if Lydia covered this in her video, the actual panelling and the walls and all of that interior was actually transported from France to Cliveden. So it's actually not a replicated uh, interior, it's an actual original which has been moved across. So I think it's um, it's got many stories locked in it, which I'm sure are very fascinating. But anyway, yesterday I went into London and I was gonna vlog, but it was just quite a push. Um, but I headed to Regent's Park and wow, what a, a lovely time of year to visit Regent's Park. If you're in London and you've got a spare hour or so, it's definitely worth a visit because it's looking very autumnal over there at the moment. But I was there shooting a campaign, so I just wanted to focus on that. Just a second ago, I had some deliveries arrive to the house and one of those deliveries was a new brand that I've just discovered um, whilst I was doing some online shopping. So I thought I would share it with you. Um, I purchased them myself and I thought we'll open them up quickly. So the brand is Wax London and they're very reasonably priced in comparison to some of the trouser brands that I shop at already. And so I picked these up in two colors. I think I purchased them both in the same size because they actually offer a 31 inch waist. I'm a 30 slash 31, but most people only do 30 or 32. I'm not sure what I ended up with, we'll find out. I might have one of each size, and I'm hoping that one of them would fit correctly. Okay, so I brought both pairs in a 30 inch waist. Um, so I obviously didn't pick up a 31, I'm not sure why I didn't do that. Hopefully you can see there. We have some double pleated herringbone trousers with belt loops. I was really pleased to find these. The fabric feels um, quite light. So these are a wool blend, which will explain why they don't feel as good a quality as the Dries van Noten ones that I have. But that is also reflected in the cost. So the price of these were, I think, a quarter, possibly a third of the cost of my other trousers that are similar to this. So I guess that that's reflected in that, but they look great. And from what I can see, they're gonna fit really nicely as well. And I'm hoping that they're gonna serve the purpose that they're intended to really well. So first impressions are great. They have facilitated all of the requirements that I was looking for within a pair of trousers, as I've just stated. And they also look visually perfect. They're just, the feeling of them isn't as pure as some trousers that I already own. They also did the same pair in a brown and I was like, yes, we need some brown trousers. I don't have any brown trousers for this time of year. So we'll, we'll give them a try on. We'll see how they fit. The fabric obviously feels a bit thinner than most wool trousers because they are a blend, but they're, they're nice. I um, have slightly turned up the uh, hems just because they're a little bit long. It means that I've got the option if I want to put a permanent turn up on the trousers, I could do. The difference between these trousers and the ones that I have from Dries Van Noten are predominantly the fact that these have got two pleats on the front, which means that the actual style of the trouser is very different because it fits very differently. The fact that these have belt loops, and I'd actually say that these are a bit more comfortable because the ones from Dries Van Noten don't have the pleats, they're flat fronted even though they were a slight exception to a lot of flat-fronted trousers, they actually did fit me around the seat, which was lovely. And I had them tailored to just kind of taper in many, many years ago. They are a little bit more of a slim fit trouser. These are a bit more of a wide fit trouser. I can have these finished off a little bit longer, so I'll be able to wear these with loafers. Um, and the Dries Van Noten trousers are just finished off a bit shorter, so they work really nicely with boots but maybe they're a little bit short for my liking with loafers. I think my 
ideal right now would be to have trousers that have maybe like a quarter to half break on the foot um, just so when you sit down they don't rise up too high and also I just think it's a bit more of a traditional classic look. I would say that the waist fits as a probably as a 31 to 32. Um, I normally put on a pair of 30 inch trousers and I'm like a little bit tight. Um, these are actually a little bit loose. Um, so I might have the waist tightened up a tad. The bottoms of the trousers just taken up as well, um, just a little bit, but I'm impressed. I think they're great value for money, as I mentioned. I think these look fantastic. They look like a pure fabric. It's just the way in which they feel. The only way I'd describe it is, is they feel a bit more crispy and they feel lighter and the other ones feel a little bit softer and a bit thicker. So anyway, good times. Managed to uh, find myself two lovely pair of trousers from a new brand. I'll definitely be shopping with Wax again. Um, you can see they're a London based brand as well. Very nice. Also, I've ordered a couple more crew net knits from John Smedley. John Smedley have got a really lovely fitting crew neck and it's called the Marcus. Something I really like about this is the sleeves on it. So they've got actually like extended cuffs, as it were, um, at the bottom, which I fold up and double over and they fit really nicely. If you're somebody that's got, or know somebody that's got quite long limbs, they often find it really difficult to find clothing that's actually long enough to fit. So if you've got some really tall friends that are looking for some knitwear options that are going to facilitate their lengthy arms, then the Marcus knit from John Smedley is the one. It's a really great knit. I noticed that on this knit that I already have, I had stain that I tried to get it out with vanish and I tried other techniques. I've got this big stain just here. So the old one will become for around the house. This will become the replacement for when we're going out for dinner and stuff. I've also realized how much I'm wearing my Theory and Luca Filoni white or light cream knitwear and they're not getting through the wash fast enough for me to style them up. And so again, I've just ordered one in the Marcus because I know that this is a really lovely fit. Fabric's beautiful. So I've now got a few of those for rotation um, that I can pick between. So I'm pleased to have got those. I also ordered a couple more pair of brown socks from um, Turnbull and Asa because again, I've realized that I wear quite a lot of brown shoes, in particular brown loafers and I think that it's important to have socks that complement your shoes. And so I've got a ton of black socks, but I don't really have as many brown. I had two pairs of brown socks. And again, I was finding that the circulation of those going through the wash wasn't quite there. And so I purchased two more pairs of those as well. So there are a couple of new items that have arrived over the last couple of weeks. I actually started filming this video. I think you probably see the date on my phone at the start. I think it was like two weeks ago. It's been filmed over a long period, but Lydia is currently in the Cotswolds. She's doing a book signing today, um, I think at a fair or something. And so I've got the house to myself, which is really lovely. I'm gonna do some admin um, down in the basement. I think then I'm gonna do a little bit more organization. I also went out the other day and um, checked on the bees. The, um, the new colony is looking quite small, so it'll be interesting to see whether they overwinter because They've definitely got enough stores, but there's just not a lot of bees. I think a lot of the summer bees have died off and it's just the winter bees left and it just looks like such a small little cluster. So I hope that they're going to survive the winter months. They'll be getting their winter fondant in probably about six weeks time. It's not long now until they'll be getting that. And I'm gonna look to see if I can put some chicken wire around the both the hives because obviously we had the woodpecker um, come early in this, was it was early this year. Yeah, I think it was and uh, have a go. So we're gonna give them a little bit of protection from that as well. My main colony is looking quite strong. Open that up, there's quite a lot of bees in there, but they're tucked up now for the winter. So all's good over there. The chickens are settled in with their new floor. There are plenty of leaves on that floor now. The garden's a bit going a bit tidy. I managed to go around and uh, do the lawn and do the patio. So um, it's starting to come together in the garden. It's getting to that time of year now where everything starts to look bare, but I kind of quite like it because it feels really tidy after this kind of transitional period where 
you know, some things are still alive, some things are dying, it just is a little bit higgledy piggledy and now everything's kind of like starting to like die back down. It just looks a lot cleaner and it gives us the ability to go out there and really tidy everything back up again. So I think over the next month or so that will be the garden kind of shut down as well for the winter months and uh, we'll be prepping for spring summer 2024 which is very exciting. Um, we have some work that's going to be starting in the new year as I think we've mentioned before which will help increase the curb appeal of the house which will be nice and I've also got a few meetings um, at the house just for some future works here as well so yeah things are in motion it's getting pretty busy um, work-wise I've opted out of a few trips abroad um, I just quite like the idea of staying at home now no plans to travel I'm looking forward to getting the Christmas tree down and uh, doing all of the seasonal stuff with lids because we um, we do enjoy our seasonal festivities so anyway I am absolutely rambling I'm gonna go downstairs and um, I'm gonna get busy with my day so thank you for watching this week's video I hope you have enjoyed it hello lummy and as always I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday 5 p.m. I hope you have a great rest of the week and we'll be seeing you then